One of the problems in ophthalmology is that the number of patients who we have to treat has been expanding and the number of treatments available to us has also been increasing hugely. We've had a big problem in actually managing to provide the service, provide enough capacity. Over the last 10 to 15 years there's been an increase of about 40% of the number of outpatients being seen in ophthalmic departments and that is set to increase yet again in the next 15 years. a and &E is an extremely busy department. If we look from 2001 to 2015 we saw a 50% increase in attendances. So that was obviously a need that we needed to look at in order to try to manage that service, but still keeping up with the demands that it was coming yeah, through. You can see that what we want to do here. is to ensure that every member of our clinical team is actually performing at the peak of their ability. So in order to do this, we have now developed the ophthalmic framework, so we can take the, the nurses, the optometrists, the orthoptists, and upskill them to, to develop new competencies. This training is aimed at graduate non-medical eye healthcare professionals and the main objective is to make sure that training takes place within the high volume areas of ophthalmology and it's set at three different levels so that people can be trained to the appropriate level and so that they can move on in a stepwise direction to advance clinical practice if required. Right, okay, let's straight to my right shoulder. The framework covers cataract, glaucoma, medical retina and also acute and emergency which are some of the highest throughput areas within ophthalmology. And each level builds on the, on the one before, so that you actually have spiral learning and people build their competencies. Orthoptists at the moment have uh, direct referrals into their care to um, manage certain eye conditions. Um, so we're very used to developing patient pathways. Um, and so this framework is enabling us to get recognition for work that we can do and are doing. Um, and it means that those standards have been assessed by our, our colleagues within the hospital. This framework will enable those skills to be recognised and also to be transferable. So if my members of staff wanted to go to work for another trust, then those standards would be recognised in, in other trusts around the country. You're actually moving this very gradually, but looking at this... To date, the training has largely been mixed and ad hoc. It tends to have been uniprofessional. And where training has taken place, this has often been led by consultants who have had to take time out and do it in, in their own time. So now with this standardised training programme, it's going to free up some consultant time, but there's also benefits for the orthoptist, optometrist and ophthalmic nurses who are now going to be able to have a developmental programme which hopefully will increase retention um, and even Im Im improve recruitment, recognising that there's a career pathway that's going to be looking after them and allowing them to move on to the level that they would like to rather than being limited simply by the, the service that exists. Mr Slater? I have always been passionate about ophthalmology and uh, always wanted to develop my skills and knowledge to a very advanced level um, and work independently. Okay, so if you can look straight ahead, please. I see patients with uh, retinal conditions like uh, age-related macular degeneration, uh, retinal vein occlusions, uh, diabetic retinopathies, central serous retinopathy patients. I have been uh, trained uh, here at Western at master levels uh, as an advanced practitioner. So I assess, uh, diagnose and manage patients. The role of the advanced practitioner, the impact that it has, it has reduced waiting times. So treatment to a patient who arrives in A&E who has a less complex symptom could easily be seen by a practitioner and this has been a great way of channeling different pathways for patients. This is a programme that is a win-win-win situation. The practitioners themselves will be able to develop and learn with background knowledge in order to be able to deliver the care that they, in some cases, are already delivering, but they will have more confidence and they will also feel more confident in their ability to develop. And you can see that if you look temporally, mm -hmm. um, we're now working with a, a larger team, a team that's got a different mix of skills within it. So when clinical care needs to be provided, we have people who are ideally trained to perform any particular role within that clinical care pathway. So 
want to know? Um, With a framework, it's now meant that we've got a very structured curriculum um, across the four lead areas, which will be present in most ophthalmology departments. And it means that then the, the patients can be confident that the person treating them has the appropriate level of skill. We know that colleagues know to whom they can delegate and at what level they can delegate. And it also means that for the employer, um, they know that they are appointing somebody appropriate to a new role that they may have.